I've been using my EP Ever Tracer A for about two years now, and to be fair, it hasn't missed a beat. I've reported before that it doesn't do MPPT until there's about 10 watts coming in and the state of charge battery meter is a bit oddly programmed, uh, but other than that I think it's excellent value for money. But actually this isn't my Tracer A. Actually, the Tracer A is being discontinued and this is its replacement, the Tracer AN. The Tracer AN is essentially exactly the same as the Tracer A here. Um, it comes in the same variants of between 10 and 40 amps and with uh, a maximum solar input of 46 and 92 volts depending on which model you go for. Both the A and the AN will automatically switch between 12 and 24 volt systems too. So why a new model? Well, essentially, there is one major difference here and uh, a couple of minor changes. The major design change is around the common connection between the solar panels, the battery and the load. The Tracer A here was common positive, so the uh, positive of the solar panel was permanently connected to the uh, battery positive as was the positive of the load. And with my meter here in continuity mode we can see that if I connect the uh, positive of the solar to the positive of the uh, battery and indeed the load we have continuity. However the N in AN stands for negative or at least that's what I'm assuming it does. So the tracer AN is common negative. So if I connect uh, my probes to the positive here there is no continuity but if I do it to the negative side there is clear continuity between the input and output. Now I know a few people prefer a common negative solar charge controller so I'm sure that they'll be pleased with this change from EP Ever. Now putting aside the slight cosmetic differences of the heatsink here and the buttons on the front I think there are only a couple of minor changes here between the Tracer A and the Tracer A N, one good and one not so good sadly. Firstly, they've placed a backlight on the screen of the Tracer A N and again this seemed like a silly omission uh, from the Tracer A and uh, for me in the shed I have to turn on quite a big light to be able to uh, see this LCD screen so the fact that there's now a backlight on the Tracer A N I think is a, a good option of course when I turn on that big light uh, it probably uses an awful lot more energy than this little backlight here but this should make it easier to see the Tracer A N screen in all different conditions. The second change is more of a problem. The Tracer AN states in the specification and in the manual that it's compatible with various different EP Ever accessories. However, I've found the compatibility to be less than perfect. For example, the uh, Tracer AN is not compatible with my original MT50 meter here. If I plug that in, it says it's connecting, but it never does. It sits there forever connecting to the uh, Tracer AN. But if I get a newer model, which I've uh, recently got hold of, and plug that in there, well, this one does connect and uh, works absolutely fine with the AN. So unfortunately, older MT50 meters, which look exactly the same, have no distinguishable difference, um, don't work with the AN series. If you were hoping to use the uh, cheap USB cable I put together to connect to the Tracer AN, well, yes you can, it works perfectly, but sadly, the Wi-Fi version doesn't. I can't get that to work at all. The e-boxes all work, however, um, as does, of course, the official cable. So I guess I can't really complain uh, too much about my unofficial modifications not working with the Tracer AN. But, you know, it would have been nice and it's certainly worth mentioning the fact here. The Tracer AN is sold as supporting both lead acid and lithium ion batteries but in reality that's only really supported by the PC software. You can't access the lithium settings via these two buttons. 
once you're in that software there are some uh, predefined uh, charging parameters for 3S and 6S systems but who uses those um, but you can adjust every single parameter so you can easily support 7S for example but you do need to remember that this is a three stage charger. It has a bulk stage, a boost stage, and a float stage. Now, often people don't like to float lithium ion cells. I've no reason to think why the Tracer AN doesn't do full MPPT, but it's probably best off that I check, isn't it? So on the right hand side here, this port power meter is showing the uh, battery voltage here, and I've undercharged this battery for a little bit, so it's sat at 12.5 volts, and it's showing 25 milliamps being consumed, so uh, the uh, Tracer AN is pulling about 25 milliamps when there's no solar input. We can see that there's no solar input here on the left hand side because this port power meter is showing zero volts and zero amps and uh, also of course the graphic on the screen is not showing any solar connected. So we should be able to compare the watts coming in on this meter here with the watts going into the battery and hopefully uh, we'll see DC to DC conversion so the voltage will be dropped and the current will be stepped up. Now this meter on the right hand side has a limit of 5 amps so hopefully we won't hit that and there's a possibility that we might so uh, we'll just see what happens. On the input I'm going to use two 50 watt monocrystalline solar panels connected in series so 100 watts in total which is why we might see 5 amps but it's a little bit overcast today so hopefully we won't. Let's connect them up. And uh, there we are, 40 volts open circuit, that's about right. And then that voltage is dropping on the solar panels to somewhere close to the battery voltage and then creeping up again to find the maximum power point. Now uh, it thinks it's around the 33, 32 volts and we're getting 1.15 amps, 50 watts coming in and uh, well 50 something watts going into the battery now actually for you it's almost easier to pause the video and look at the efficiency here but if i move my eyes quickly between the two i suspect we're losing about two watts in the conversion but clearly the battery is at 13.4 volts and there's 2.4 amps going in and the uh, solar panels at 31 volts and about an amp so Clearly, there is a DC to DC conversion here, and uh, well, with this bobbing around a little bit, it does look like we are doing full maximum power point tracking. So, that's a thumbs up for the Tracer AN. I think it's probably worth having a look inside. I've removed the four screws from the heatsink, which uh, hold on the front plastic case. And uh, that, oh, I can feel that's attached. Yeah, so the uh, the front uh, LCD module there is permanently attached to the uh, front plastic, but that's actually on a ribbon cable, which if I do that, yep, that can be removed if needed. There's a large inductor there. Remember, this is the 20 amp model. I think on the 30 and the 40 amp models, you get two inductors rather than just the one some decent sized caps there and they're rated for 100 volts 270 microfarads each uh, these clamps here will be holding the mosfets on the back of the board down to the heat sink or helping with that um, adhesion anyway to uh, make sure that those mosfets which uh, are usually down there at the back can we see those yeah we can just about um they're holding those on this is fused at 35 amps remember this is the 20 amp model so i always recommend putting an external fuse a more suitably sized perhaps a 25 amp fuse or a 20 amp breaker on your battery connections to uh, protect everything. But remember, the fuses are there to protect the wires, not the uh, devices. This has its own protection, even though that's at 35 amps. Um, so there's the main microcontroller there, and uh, there's various supporting circuitry, some low value resistors there, which are obviously used as shunts to uh, detect current uh, but yeah it's much as i would expect here inside an ep ever mppt solar charge controller uh, much the same 
to the original Tracer A I opened a couple of years ago. Obviously a few differences, um, but I'm not going to go through and completely reverse engineer the differences here uh, because, you know, um, it's a very complicated circuit. But needless to say, it does look quite well put together. The soldering looks to be of top quality, and it does also seem to be a sort of conformal coated there, um, does the PCB, so it's, uh, it's protected from humid and damp conditions. So that's probably a good thing here in the shed. So that's the Tracer AN MPPT solar charge controller from EP Ever, which I have to say I quite like, but it's a case of two steps forward and one step back for me, unfortunately. I like the fact that it's negatively grounded, that seems very sensible these days, and I like the fact that the back screen is illuminated, that's an excellent improvement. However, the fact that it's not fully compatible with all previous EP Ever accessories is a little bit of a downer for me, unfortunately. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.